I enjoy sketching on toned surfaces. This paper happens to be the Canson Me Tians. It's kind of a worn tone. And surprisingly, this paper, even though there's a little bit of wobbling, really handles watercolor nice. I believe it's a 65% cotton content. It has a little bit of tooth to the surface and it's internally and externally sized. So it really handles watercolor nicely. I used a waterproof pen to draw. Uh, you can either use a just store-bought one, but actually my favorite is to use a fountain pen. So I drew this with a fountain pen, waterproof ink, and then I used the, uh, it's called a burn sepia by, um, who is this? Uh, Carbon Ink, that's, that's the name of the company. And I put it into this pen that has a brush tip on it. And the cool thing is that I used this pen to do most of the values on the building. When I put it down, when I came back immediately afterwards, I was able to move the ink around enough to kind of get some interesting washes of color. Where I needed the color to be a little bit more saturated, I put the ink into a little dish and I used an inexpensive brush and just painted the passage of color through here. Where there is white, I the thin little areas, you can either use the Diatramentus document ink, which is waterproof. It's kind of a thin, kind of milky, it's not too heavy, but when it came to the sky, I was using the Dr. Martin pen white, but I was using it with a brush and just thin, thinning it down enough. Of course, there's no problem with just using the gouache. Only thing I would suggest with this is that, of course, this isn't waterproof. Both of these are waterproof. And so once I put them down, I knew that I could paint up to and around it and not have the, the underlying colors get all messed up and dirty next to the white. So that was how I handled this. Little areas, little lines, you can always use a little kind of disposable um, white pen to do that. I chose to use this one. So the colors, there's a huge variety of colors in Canson's, probably a hundred. I, but I like papers that are warm or kind of grays. I don't go into blues particularly or greens or orange, but I like papers that have kind of a warm undertone. I know that tone papers have been around for hundreds of years. I just don't see too many people nowadays using it with watercolor. So I thought, well, I'd share why I like it. Here's one that's on more of a, a grayish tone. You can see that the pigment didn't move. It really soaked into the paper more. With this brand, it's not one I normally lose, use. It's a little bit more challenging to work on. And also, I did, I took the subject matter here, my favorite little town in Italy called Volterra, and I did it on a different piece of paper. So same scene handled a little bit differently, but I wanna talk about how this one is different. I painted on a paper that you can see, it is anything but a size. It's acted very much like a blotter the pigment wants to go completely through it. You'll notice even here that my signature became blurred. Before I painted on it, so it wouldn't act like a blotter, I took some matte medium and I covered the surface first with matte medium. That way the watercolor would sit a little more on the surface um, and not bleed through. You can see that it did but it wasn't too bad. So that was how I could handle that. With this one, I drew with pencil. Uh, there is no pen work on here. 
part of the reason is that this paper is pretty rough. You can see that it'd be very easy to snag a fountain pen and maybe hurt the, um, the nib, so I didn't want to do that. There's a lot of white here in the sky, um, thinner glazes over here, but I really like the way that uh, this type of paper works. Other times I will use mulberry paper. Uh, this is mulberry paper that I've stained with tea. I soaked it in tea and then you can see a little shine on the surface. Matte medium's on here. This is the same paper, but I didn't stain it. So I was really after the warmer tone. This paper right here is the rice paper I just spoke of. And there it is. It's very, very soft paper. I like how it handles watercolor. You will not have as much control as you would on a piece of traditional watercolor paper. That's neither good nor bad. That's just what is. This paper is internally and externally sized, very easy to work on. This one's a little more challenging. The truth is I enjoyed working on both of these and I just wanted to share Know, how it can be fun to you know explore using different ways whether you're using that medium or you're using white or you're just going straight with traditional watercolor there's a lot of different ways that we can sketch that um, are different so again toned paper and here's one more with the day that I went to the Park. All that I took was black ink and a white pen and a black fountain pen and was able to do this little sketch of Mark Twain. So kind of fun, different. Hope you'll try different inks. You'll play and explore with watercolor and I hope that uh, this is a little source of inspiration.